Tessellation is a repeating pattern with no gaps. Imagine I have an equilateral triangle. You could draw in another equilateral triangle to it, and again, and again, and you can form a pattern which doesn't have any gaps in it. This is what it means for a shape to tessellate. So we can say that an equilateral triangle tessellates. If we look at the angles at each point, and what I mean by that is the point of intersection of the triangles. So if you look here, here, uh, here, well obviously you could carry the pattern on down here if you wanted. It could carry on forever. What you should notice about the um, what you should notice about the angles around each of these points is that they form a full circle. So that means they need to add up to 360 degrees. And this is actually the condition for a shape to tessellate. It will tessellate only if, um, at the point of intersection, the shapes will have angles that add up to 360 degrees. Let's have a look at another one. So this time let's have a look at an octagon, regular octagon. Right, this time let's have a look at a regular hexagon. And we should notice again, so this is like a honeycomb, this is the same as a, um, a beehive. And we can see again that at any point of intersection of three hexagons, we have a full circle. We can tell the angles add up to 360 degrees. So again, we can say a regular hexagon will tell. If we look at a regular pentagon, it doesn't tessellate. Because if we join up the pentagons like this, you can see that we're going to end up with gaps. So we can join the pentagons up, but there will always be gaps, tessellation. And if we look where the hexagons meet, the angles of the hexagons do not add up to 360 because of this little gap here. Sometimes though, you can have irregular shapes that tessellate. If we look at this question here, Ben needs to tile his kitchen floor and decides to use two types of tiles shown in the diagram. By drawing more tiles in the diagram, show that the shapes will tessellate. So if I repeat the shapes that he's got, so he has an irregular hexagon and a square, we can carry those shapes on. And if we look at the um, point, if we look at the point where the shapes intersect, so that's going to be here. And obviously, you could carry that on. So you could. Um, imagine that up here instead. So, but also imagine it up here. If we look here at one of the places where the points intersect um, or the edges intersect, we can see there are no gaps, but we need to prove this, or we could prove this. To prove it, we could look at the fact that this is 90 degrees. And we could also say that this is 45, this is 45, this is 45, this is 90, this is 90, this is 45, and this is 45. And if we add those values up, we get 360 degrees, which shows us that the shape tessellates. Here's a GCSE question for you to try. So please copy this out onto a centimeter squared paper and show that the given shape tessellates by drawing more shapes on the grid. Please pause the video now and have a go. And when you're ready for the answer, press play. For the answer, we could do this. So I could draw a few more on the grid to show that it will tessellate. So let's do another one. He could do another one here. You know, you could, so basically what this shows is they join together with no gaps. So there we go. And if we look at a point where um, you'll have three of them intersecting, for example, here, we should notice that the interior angles are 90. There's another 90 there. And here we can see that's 180. Now, 180 plus 90 plus 90 is going to be 360, which shows us that the shape tessellates. 
Here's a harder GCSE question for you to try. This time you have to actually prove it. So the pattern below is made using small squares and rectangular octagonal tiles. Is it possible to use this pattern tile to tessellate and completely cover a rectangular area with only the need to cut tiles at the edges of the rectangle? You must surely working and explain your answer. Essentially, you need to show that this shape, this compound shape will tessellate. So it might help if you consider the interior angles of a polygon, that might help you. Uh, pause the video now, and when you're ready for the answer, press play. Here's the answer. So firstly, I've just done a little sketch to show that the shape looks like it will tessellate. And then to do the maths behind it, we want to show that at this point here, or indeed where any, um, where you have any interface of the points, that the angles will add up to 360. So we need to work out the interior angle of one of these shapes, which is an octagon, a regular octagon. Same one here, so basically we need two lots of the interior angle of a regular octagon, and then this angle here is 90. So what we can do is work out the interior angle of a regular octagon. There are different ways of doing this, but what we could do is consider what the sum of the interior angles is going to be. And if you remember from our previous video on polygons, we can split up an octagon into six um, triangles. So we can say that the sum of the interior angles of an octagon is going to be n minus 2 times 180, where n is 6, which will give us 6 times 180. Then, to work out what one of the interior angles is, you need to divide this by 8, because there's 8 of them. This gives you an answer of 135. So, to work out what the angles around this point add up to, we need to do 135 plus 135 plus 90. And this will give you 270 plus 90, which is 360, which proves that the shape tessellates.